bread of the pure virgin. Grant your people grace to put away fleshly lusts, that they may be ready for your visitation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for Christmas for the Nativity of our Lord is from Micah chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The psalm today is Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you lead Joseph like a flock. You are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rise for the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard as it had been told them. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our meditation today, this Christmas day, is our Gospel reading from Luke 2. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. That's our text. Maybe may be seated. Dear Christian friends, last night on Christmas Eve, I preached about how the baby in the manger is God's gift to us, indeed the best gift ever. Who is this, the one born and laid in a manger? Why was he sent? There is a clue given to us in the people who were first called to go and see him, and those were the shepherds. The angels went first to shepherds. You might ask, why is that? Why were the shepherds the first to hear? I've heard several different answers given to that question. And it's not that they contradict each other. In fact, they may all be true in their own way. One answer I've heard that the angel simply had to tell someone. And at that hour of night, the shepherds were the only ones awake. Okay, well, that might possibly be a reason. Of course, Jesus did tell us to be awake at all times, but he was not talking about that literally. He meant to be ready for his second coming, which, of course, his first coming was meant to prepare us for, as we heard in our colleague this morning. Another answer frequently given to that question is that the shepherds were lowly and humble. And that, of course, is also a, is a good answer. The shepherds were lowly folk, and Jesus did come to be humble and to save people who are humble. In fact, of course, it is only after recognizing our sin and need for a Savior that the actual Savior can save us. In our first reading from Micah 5, our Old Testament reading this morning, there we saw an important reason pointed out even as it gave the birthplace of our Savior in the town of Bethlehem, predicted hundreds of years before. Micah also said, He shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. I think this is indeed one of the main reasons that the birth of Jesus was announced first to shepherds, because this one Jesus, our Savior, came to be a shepherd for us, a shepherd king, just like David, of course. David was a lowly shepherd, the youngest of his brothers, forced to stay out in the fields watching sheep even during the feast where Samuel, that great famous prophet, was attending. But David ended up on that day being anointed by Samuel to be the king and not only a king, Ultimately, he came to, he was given the promise that his descendant would be the promised Messiah. And David became the most famous ancestor of that Savior, so that the coming Messiah, the coming Savior, was often simply called the Son of David. The psalm today also reflected that. In Psalm 80, we heard, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved. The shepherds were the first ones called to go and see, and then they also became the first proclaimers of the good news of Jesus' birth. That, too, is something good to take note of in our text. Following those, these shepherds in our text, and this even before this picked up, and before we picked up our reading this morning, they had the angel and the angelic choir come to them at night and announce the good news to them, 
good news of great joy that would be for all the people. They were told of the birth of the Savior, Christ the Lord, and given a sign that this child would be wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And then, of course, the angelic choir singing, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. That is when the shepherds then said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see. They were given a sign for a particular reason so that they could go and see for themselves. And having seen, they made known to all present what the angels had told them about this child. And then, having seen for themselves with their own eyes, they returned to the fields. But as they went, they were glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen. God still sends shepherds to this day. Pastors are shepherds, proclaimers, of the good news in the office established by Jesus himself. But you know, we're all shepherds in that sense because we are all called to be proclaimers of that good news. One video news I watched recently reported on a depiction of the birth of Jesus in a nativity play of sorts. And it featured, that interview featured a young boy who was playing a shepherd who said, our job as Christians is to spread the word of God. As we go, we proclaim the good news that we have heard. Mary, too, is a good example in our text. She treasured up all these things, pondering in them in her heart. She thought about and considered God's promises in his word and all the things that had been happening to and around her. She wondered and pondered how God was working. She probably didn't understand it all yet. I'm sure she didn't. But at the birth and the announcement of angels to the shepherds, was for her a very important clue, something to think about and ponder. We don't always know exactly how God is working in our lives today either, but it is good for us like Mary to ponder and contemplate what God is up to. And a big part of what God, how God acts is shown to us by the way in which he sent our Savior, by the birth of this Jesus Christ, born in a stable, placed in a manger, and worshipped by shepherds. For us, too, the birth of this child is good news, bringing great joy for all the people, as the angel told the shepherds. And so we also, we also come and behold, we rejoice, and we leave glorified and praising God for all that he has done in Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. Now may the peace of God which passes all our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Join us in the offertory created me.
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, you reign over all the earth. We lift up our voices and sing for joy to you in celebration of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Preserve this delight among your people throughout the church year. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send yeah. forth men to publish your peace and bring us your good news of happiness. Keep them faithful to declare your gracious reign in Christ. Bless the work of missionaries at home and abroad, that all the ends of the earth may see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our yeah. prayer. Gracious Lord, the mystery of the Incarnation was first believed and proclaimed by common men and women, Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. Give us confidence to tell the joyful message of our Savior's birth, life, death, and resurrection, that your Spirit may work the miracle of faith as he wills. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, guide all who administer and judge our laws in this land. Preserve us in justice and truth and make us faithful citizens. Honoring those in authority over us. Wherever rulers spurn your calling to serve justly, are hostile to your truth, or persecute your people, turn them from their evil and protect your church. Lord, in your mercy, you are prepared. grant healing, peace, patience, and faith that endures to all who suffer sickness in mind or body, to all homebound, and to any who ask our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Prayer. The great love that laid your Son in a manger also lays his flesh and blood before us in bread and wine. Grant us grace to bow our hearts before him with all those in heaven and on earth who adore him, that we may receive his forgiveness and life, his repentance and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. In the birth of your Son, you have called people from all times and places into the body of Christ, his church. We give you thanks for all the believers who have gone before us especially who have been with us during Christmas's past and now live with you. Give us a sure confidence of your promise of resurrection and eternal life, and bring us at last together with them into your presence at the full coming of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, O Lord, for the sake of your Son, the Word became flesh, the Savior of the nations, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you.
be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. with us in the past and his work with us in the future. We go in the peace of the Lord this day. Merry Christmas. <laughs> 